Well, welcome to Packington Summers Fishery. I'm here today on Molands Lake. We're on a brilliant peg today, peg 45. And I just want to show you how I go about attacking a lake like this on the method feeder. You know, many anglers just use a little method feeder like that all day, putting little bits of bait in. But what I like to do, I like to combine it with a nice big feeding feeder, be really aggressive with my bait, and almost create myself an end peg over there. Because most people, they're itching to get on the pole. They'll give the method a few casts, but really they want to be on the pole. I found here that if I stick with this for five hours, I'll get enough runs of fish to do really well in the match. So I just want to, want to chuck this out now, and then you can get in nice and close and see how I'm do, what I'm doing. So we'll just get this over there. We're chucking really close, as tight as we can today. Look at that, nice and quick with grass. Then what I'm doing, You've allowed elasticated methods here, so it's important to have two on the go because of the hook bait that I like to use. Got a little quick stop on there, size 16 kkm hook, razor sharp, and I'm using a little expander pellet on the hook. Just a pro expander that I've soaked up, and then I've just doused them in the Bonoffi syrup, but uh, Bonoffi bait booster. Just makes them a bit more rubbery for the method. So just have them on a quick stop like that. Perfect. And all I'm doing, oh, we've got one. Didn't take long, did it? Just using 10 foot Monster X. Lovely soft rod for this kind of fishing. And the action today has been fantastic. Nice, nice little left one. Lengthy in the corner of the mouth there. But this is why two feeders are so important when you're fishing like this because normally I'd have had time then to quickly swap this one over onto a made feeder, but as that bite came so quick, I didn't actually get time. But there you go. So what I'm doing, I'm making it up. It's got a 4 inch hook length, like I say, size 16 kkm, 017. Power line. Right, so we've got our method mould, and we're just gonna, this is how I go about doing it. Put my hook bait in there first, that nice little expander. Just cover it in two mils like that. Give it a nice firm squeeze. Couple of presses, out she pops. And then what I do, I give it a little cover in a ground bait, just a secondary skin. I just feel like it creates a bit of a cloud and it also protects the hook bait, which is a soft expander. So, a couple of presses like that, lovely. Just before you cast it out, give it one last squeeze, a bit of a firm down with your thumb, and then we're going to chuck it nice and tight. Don't think that'll take too long to get another bite. But this is the, the, the key thing. We've got two feeders on the go. Little needle there. Once again, once you get into the rhythm for, for this, dead easy, dead quick. Back in the mould. Two mil pellets. And squeeze. A bit of ground bait. Oh. Thought we had another one then. Anyway, so there we go, we've got another feeder ready to go. Ready for the next fish, which I don't think will take too long in coming. But what I'm doing today, I'm really attacking the swim. So I've got baiting up feeder, and what I'm doing, I'm just giving it every 20 minutes or so, three feeders like that. Yep. So I'm just putting some hemp, odd bit of corn in there, and a little bit of ground bait, just to, just to get it there. And three or four of those, every sort of 20 minutes, is really ramping the swim up. And what's happening is, I'll go in and I'll get six or seven fish really, really quick. Nice big F1. And then it'll slow down and I know I have to put the bait in again. Sometimes I keep putting eight mils in. I know eight mils work really well here. So I'm just mixing it up. A bit of hemp, a few eight mils. Again, just caps off with that ground bait. And just attacking. I'm fishing as close to that far bank as I possibly can. You know, I just... It must only be 18 inches deep or so over there, but that's where the fish want to be. You know, it's warm today, the fish want to be in that shallow water. Not leaving the feeder in long, if I haven't had a bite, within a minute or two, quickly reel it in, chuck it in again. We're trying to create competition over there, lots of bait. 
lots of activity and your bites are coming quick so there's no need to leave it out there long. In fact leaving it out there is counterproductive. I just want to show you while we're waiting for the next pull. Little trick I do. Don't like to have too many pellets on in my main fishing bowl. Because as we all know, when the weather's warm, not like it has been warm lately, but your two mil pellets can dry out. They're about perfect to be honest. But what I like to do, I soak my pellets in the pellet wetter and then transfer them into a bowl like this where I can just, you know, zip it up or a plastic tub, something like that that you can zip it up and keep all the elements away from them and your pellets will stay nice and fresh, nice and tacky. And then every, every so often, I'll just transfer a small amount into this bowl and then what I like to do is just give it a drizzle of the banoffee. Get the banoffee on there, just a little bit. Just like that, not a lot. I might have a fish on, lads. Yeah, we've got one. Just as you can see, I've got, I use loads of that banoffee, so, but it's just enough, it's ever so sticky, and it just gives you that nice tacky feeling, which is really important when you use a soft hook bait like an expander. If you used to use pellets that weren't sticky enough, it really struggled to, your, belly, your bait would get damaged, so we need, we need nice and sticky pellets. A little bit of ground bait would work as well. This is where the advantage of having them two feeders on the go really comes in, because I can quickly unhook this one. Look at that, lovely. Nice fish. And then look, we've got a swivel on there like that. Quickly take that off, put the next feeder on, and we're good to go. We'll get it back in. So, got my, my pellets there, like I said, with that banoffee on there. And I'm just gonna quickly bait up again. Get the next feeder ready. Don't worry about the rod, it's in the book ripper. Can't get pulled in, so. I don't mind that I'm making my feeder up and not watching my rod. It's not gonna go anywhere. There we go, we've got the next method loaded up, ready to go. That's been in there for what, 20, 30 seconds? So, I'm surprised if I get one in a minute. But yeah, so I've got my banoffee drizzled on there like I've shown you. Just work it in, it's such a sticky liquid. Just work it in and your soap pellets will take it on. Look at that, beautiful. But because like I say, I use a soft hook bait, either an expander or a piece of meat, I just know that having them a little bit stickier than what you might normally do really pays off. And they still break down fast. You know, I've tried it in the edge today and even a rock hard baller, that will still break down in 30 or 40 seconds. And that's without casting and the fish attacking it. So good little trick that because it keeps your pellets fresh and keeps them nice and tacky. A couple of things that are really worth talking about as well is how I've got my rod set up when I'm waiting for bites spot where I'm chucking is like just ever so slightly to my right and I like to chuck hit my clip and bring my rod straight down in front of me if I was to have my rod rest like over here so I was waiting for bites from my rod over here yeah, there's a great chance I'd move my feeder when I've, after I've cast but because I've got the rod rest in front of me there's no problem seeing bite I can just hit the clip and bring my rod down in one smooth motion and know that I'm being as accurate as I can Lovely fishing. A ten foot monster X rod, nice and nice and soft for this game. Lovely 
the F1. I'll just show you one last time, ice fish, the casting procedure. It's so evident today that the closer I can get to that far bank, the more fish I'm casting. So we've got to make sure that our feeder is not moving. Once again, not had time to bait me up a feeder before I caught a fish. There you go, that's what we're up against. Because I store my pellets in these little, lovely little jars, my little expanders that I prepare, I like to just pour a few out onto the lid of the tub, just so it, I find it a little bit easier to uh, work with. So we're just making up another feeder. Like I said, I didn't have time to make one up then. The bite was so quick. Two mils. A bit of ground bait on top. Nice and easy, like that. So there we go. Feeder's ready, and I'll just show you, talk you through the cast. And the re like I said, the reason why I've got the rod rest as it is, almost straight at where I'm fishing, because there we go, we've got the loaded feeder. Just a nice, gent have a nice drop, a couple of meters that is, and then just a nice, gentle lob out to the target, hit them. And then down, and straight on the rod rest. Straight in the book gripper, and I'm waiting for my next bite. Got my other feeder there. Load her up. Now I'm not really watching the rod, I'm just, you know, just making sure I get my next feeder right. There it is. I'm just waiting for that rod tip to go. Slamming round again. I don't think it'd be long. But that's it, that's as simple as it is. You know, we've got a nice big sort of baiting feeder that I can put plenty of particles in with. There we go. Nice big drop back. Loads of drop backs today. Another left one. It's all about just being prepared to be bold and aggressive with your feed. Keep that hemp and them eight mils going in. <coughs> keep that casting accurate and regular and you'll just keep catching loads of fish. Especially on a venue like this where there's loads of fish to catch. Hey, we've got a car. First one of the day. Been all left one so far. Seems like a good one to end on. Chunky little mirror. Take your account. And there we go. Nice little mirror to finish our little video on. Get him in the net. I'm going to keep catching some fish.